Hey there, welcome to DIY Projects with Pete, episode number 14. I'm your host, DIY Pete, out in Bozeman, Montana, and today I'm going to show you how to make an LED concrete patio table with a built-in beverage cooler that will definitely be a hit at your next party. These LED lights will light up the drinks in the cooler and on each coaster, and the cooler will keep your beverage of choice ice cold. We'll start by building the table mold out of melanine wood. We'll fill it with concrete. We'll then polish and seal the table, add some LED lights, and finally, we'll fill the cooler with ice and throw a party. Let's talk a little bit about the tools and supplies you'll need for today's project. For tools, you're going to want to pick up or borrow a miter saw, circular saw, table saw, orbital sander, drill, nail gun or hammer, mixing tub and shovel, rubber mallet, trowel, chisel, and pry bar. And for supplies, you'll want to pick up melamine wood for the mold, six to seven bags of concrete, Portland cement, acrylic fortifier, a four by eight sheet of steel reinforcement, silicone caulk, one and a half inch screws, one fourth inch acrylic for the coasters, one and a half inch thick foam, one foot of PVC pipe and caps, and a 16 foot LED light kit. And for the complete list of instructions, tools, and supplies, head over to makezine.com slash go slash LED table. Before we get started, I'd like to give a special thanks to this project's sponsors. Bird Dog Distributing can provide the LED light kit you'll need for today's project, found at birddogdistributing.com. And Quickcrete is my number one choice for the concrete I use in my DIY projects, which can be found at your local home improvement store. And finally, thanks to makezine.com for featuring this table on their website. All right, let's get started with today's project. The first step when creating any concrete table or countertop using the reverse cast technique is to build your mold for the concrete. Cut the melamine down to size using either a circular saw or a table saw. My final table was 68 inches by 40 inches, so that's what I cut my piece of melamine to. And then cut the side strips, which we'll use as the forms for the mold, and use a table saw if you have one to do this. Otherwise, a circular saw will work. Attach the side walls to the base of your mold using one and a half inch screws. Make sure to pre-drill. I cut the side walls to two and one quarter inches, which allowed my concrete to be one and a half inches thick. Cut a sheet of one quarter inch thick acrylic or plexiglass down into four by four squares using a table saw and a miter saw. These are going to be used as the coasters that are built into the concrete tabletop. Next, you can build the mold for the concrete trough. The concrete trough mold will end up making the actual trough 36 inches long, 6 inches wide, and 7 inches deep. Then build the outer forms for the concrete trough using melamine. Use an orbital sander to scuff the acrylic and to give it a frosted glass type finish. This is going to allow the light from the LEDs to shoot up and disperse more evenly. Create knockouts out of high density foam so that you'll have a void in the concrete underneath the acrylic so that the light can shine through. Cut these down to three and a half by three and a half inch squares that are one and a half inches thick. Then figure out the layout for the concrete coasters in your mold. I made my table to fit six people with all of the concrete coasters to the left of your plate. Trace around the trough and all of the acrylic panels so that you know where each piece is going to be. This is going to help when you measure and cut the reinforcement. Place a four by eight sheet of reinforcement on your mold. Cut it down to size using a bolt cutters and make sure you have about a one inch gap between the reinforcement and the side walls. Since my final table was 68 inches by 40 inches, I cut the reinforcement to 66 inches by 38 inches. Then cut your openings for the trough and for all six coasters. Run a thin bead of 100% silicone along the base of the trough and then attach it to your mold so that it stays in place while you pour the concrete. Seal the edges of the trough mold using the 100% silicone caulk, then use a rounding tool to give it a nice rounded edge which the concrete will then form against. Attach the acrylic coasters to the mold by spreading a real thin layer of the silicone caulk onto the acrylic panel and then put it into place. Attach the slightly smaller sized foam knockouts to the underside of the acrylic coasters. This is going to help create a lip so that the acrylic panel has something to sit on and bind to, and it's also going to allow that acrylic to sit flush with the top of your concrete table. 
Run a thin bead of 100% silicone caulk along all the edges of your mold and then use a rounding tool to create a nice finished look. Use a little putty or spackle to fill in the nail holes that were created when you built the trough. Then cut four pieces of one inch diameter PVC pipe into one and a half inch lengths. Wrap each PVC knockout with a little tape so that it pops out of the mold a little bit easier in a later step. Then we'll put them into place. Use silicone to attach them to the bottom of the trough. The two outside PVC knockouts will be used to string the LED strip lights through and the two center ones will be used as drains. I built a simple cart with wheels on it out of two by fours and four by fours to make it easier to move the concrete piece around inside and out of the garage during the finishing processes. Sand away the excess putty or spackle that was used to fill the nail holes and then clean the entire mold by vacuuming everything out and then wiping things down with some rubbing alcohol. Then draw a line one and a half inches up around the outside of the trough mold. This is going to be a good reference point so you can get the one and a half inch thickness for your concrete. And now it's time to start mixing up the concrete. I used both Quickcrete 5000 for the majority of the table and then the Pro Finish Crack Resistant mix that has some fiber reinforcement in it for the trough area. Make sure to always wear rubber gloves and either a dust mask or a respirator while mixing the concrete so you don't breathe any of it in. Then mix the concrete in a plastic tub. I like to mix it until it's about a peanut butter consistency and I'll use a small shovel for this process. And to transport it to the mold where you'll pour it, just put it into an ice cream bucket, carry it over, and then start putting it into the mold. Spread the concrete around the base of the mold and check its consistency to make sure that it's not too wet or that it's too dry. Then move it around with your fingers and with your hands into all of the crevices. You'll want to fill the mold about halfway full before you add the reinforcement. And when you run out of concrete, just mix up a little bit more. I used about six to seven bags for this project. Continue filling the mold until you do reach that halfway point. And at that time, I'd recommend vibrating the concrete. To do this, you can simply lift the entire table and shake it up and down. This is going to get bubbles out of the concrete so that you have fewer voids. Now that the concrete mold is about halfway full, you can put the steel reinforcement in that we had cut earlier. If you need to, you can bend some of the steel so that it lays more flat and then continue to add more concrete to the mold until it is full. You'll know the mold is about full when it's even with the side walls and when it lines up with the reference point that we had drawn around the trough. The next step is to screed the surface of the concrete so that you can get a real smooth finish. And to do this, you take a two x four or a scrap piece of wood and move it back and forth in a saw-like motion. This process is going to remove high points. And if you do have any low points, just fill that in with a little extra concrete. Set the outside form for the trough onto the existing concrete and then start mixing up your batch of fiber reinforced concrete that's going to give this trough some extra strength and durability. I like to also add steel reinforcement into this. And when you are putting that concrete into these sidewalls for the trough, you'll want to make sure that you use some rebar to really mix that concrete into the existing concrete top so that it forms a nice bond and becomes one with the rest of the table. I used steel reinforcement in the sidewalls of the trough as well. And for even additional strength, you could use one quarter inch rebar. Continue filling the mold until it's about three-fourths of an inch from the top. Add a little more reinforcement. And finally, fill the mold until it's plumb full. Hit the outside of the trough mold with a rubber mallet to vibrate the concrete. This is going to remove the voids so that you have fewer air bubbles in the finished product. Then go ahead and screed the top so that you have a flat surface on the bottom of the trough. Use a steel trowel to continue smoothing out the bottom of the trough and the table. It needs to be smooth enough so that it sits nice and level on your base. The foam knockouts should be pretty level with your concrete. Just make sure you can see them prior to letting it cure. All right, well, the first big steps of building this concrete table are complete. I'd recommend waiting about three to four days before you demold the trough and the sidewalls of the table and wait a full seven days before you flip this entire piece. For more information about building a base, please check out the article I wrote on the website. After about three to four days, you can begin taking the forms off the trough and the sidewalls. Use a chisel and a hammer to slowly pry away each board from the trough. 
You can also remove the foam knockouts at this time. Use a chisel and slowly remove all six pieces of foam. Clean up your workspace and use a vacuum to remove any of the debris from the foam knockout areas. Then we can begin removing the sidewalls. Use a drill to remove those screws and then slowly pry or pull that sidewall away from the concrete. Always pry against the wood and not the concrete because if you pry against the concrete at this early in its curing stage, you risk damaging it. Soften all of the edges using a hand polishing pad or sandpaper. Make sure to work away from the corners because if you work into the corner, you can risk blowing or chipping out a corner. You can also sand around the trough. Make sure to get those edges and to get around those knockouts just a bit. Then use a sharp razor blade to remove all the silicone caulk residue from the underside of the acrylic coaster. You can flip the table after letting it cure for seven days. I'd recommend having at least three to four people for this process. It does weigh about 350 pounds approximately. And so you'll want to be very careful. Make sure that you have a blanket underneath or some foam padding. Flip it vertically and then slowly lift it down and separate it away from that melamine. We did flip it with just two people, but it would have been a lot easier with a couple more if you can get that extra person. Start removing the trough mold using a hammer and a chisel. You can break some of the wood up a bit and then pry it out as well. It is a bit of a challenge because it's in there pretty tight and it's all nailed together. So just take your time, plan on taking about 15 to 20 minutes to get this out. Use a pry bar to slowly piece some of the boards out and you may need to be a little creative in getting that last board out but just take your time and it will come out. Clean out the sawdust and then take the table out for polishing. I'd recommend starting with a 200 or a 400 grit concrete polishing pad on your wet polisher. It will expose some of those air holes or voids in the concrete which you'll then fill in at a later time. You'll fill the voids by creating a paste which consists of cement and acrylic fortifier. Then use a putty knife to fill some of the larger voids in the concrete trough. And use your hands or fingers to get it into some of the corners and into some of those air holes. And you can smooth out that rounded edge by simply filling the voids with additional cement paste. Continue filling the voids in the top surface of the concrete and on the sides. I found that it works pretty well if you move your hand in small circles because it pushes that cement paste into those small bug holes. Let the paste dry for at least a few hours and then begin polishing. This time you can start with a 400 grit polishing pad and slowly move it around the top surface of your piece. Keep that polishing pad nice and flat against that top surface and you may need to hold that polishing pad at a slight angle when going over those acrylic coasters. This is going to remove any excess paste and it will give your squares a super clean finish. Use the concrete polishing pad along all of the sides and then I like to slightly bevel that top edge using the concrete polisher as well. Now if you can fit the polisher inside the trough you can hit that just a bit and you can round off those top corners. After this is done, I like to do a final 800 grit polishing around the entire surface and the sides of that concrete piece. And then for the trough in the areas I could not get with the electric polisher, I use a hand polishing pad with diamonds in it. And this will kind of remove some of those rough edges. And then I do a final rinse. Let the table dry completely. And then if you need to scuff those coasters up again to give them that frosted glass-like finish, you can. Then use an air compressor or a rag to remove all the dust and debris from the table prior to sealing. I used a high gloss concrete sealer made by Quitcrete and I diluted it about three parts sealer to one part water so that it went on a little bit thinner and more evenly. Apply the concrete sealer using a clean microfiber cloth. You'll want to apply it to the top surface the sides, and the trough. I'd recommend applying about three to five thin coats of concrete sealer and let it dry for about 30 minutes between coats. Then find three of your strongest friends to help you carry that table and set it on its base. You might have to persuade them with some burgers and drinks. The next step is to set up all of your lighting. And I'd like to thank birddogdistributing.com for supplying all of the LED lights that I use in this project. You'll need to get a 16-foot reel of LED strip lights. 
They come in a kit, and I'll have a link to that in the post for this project. The kit also comes with a remote control so that you can change the color of the lighting. You can also change the brightness and quite a few other effects, which is pretty cool. I started installing the LED strip lighting by first feeding it through one of the outside holes of the trough. I then pulled it through to the top side and laid it across the bottom of the trough, later siliconing it to keep it in place. I also sealed the two outside holes where the LED strip lighting comes in and goes out with some silicone and then added caps to the middle two that are used as drains. The strip lighting can exit the trough through the other outside hole, then wrap it around and underneath each acrylic coaster. To keep it in place temporarily, you can hold it up with tape like duct tape. And then I recommend using silicone to adhere it more permanently to the underside of that concrete. Once the silicone dries, you can remove the tape and enjoy your brand new LED lit concrete table with a built-in cooler. All right, thanks so much for tuning in to DIY Projects with Pete, episode number 14. For the complete show notes, just head over to makezine.com slash go slash LED table. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash DIY Projects with Pete. I hope this video inspires you to build your own LED lit concrete table with a built-in cooler. So good luck, have fun, and cheers from Bozeman, Montana.